So welcome uh, to today's webinar. I'm Daniel Siegel. I'm from Liebe Liebe. Today, we're going to talk about agile systems engineering and how to manage your models, your MPC models or software models uh, with pipelines. Um, this is, in fact, to enable true agile modeling uh, with processes that are familiar in software engineering. Uh, um, my name, as I said before, is Daniel Siegel. I'm involved uh, in the processes around model-based software engineering tools or systems engineering tools since 1999 when we were doing distribution for Together. Um, currently, I'm heavily involved in model-based systems engineering. I'm uh, working in organizations like ProStaff and Incose and OMG uh, to bring model-based systems engineering further uh, for, for all of our users and, and our needs. Lieber Lieber is an Austrian-based customer uh, <laughs> company uh, with a branch in Houston, Texas. Our main markets are uh, Germany, United States, but also uh, countries like Japan. So we are based in Austria, but we are a pretty global outfit uh, when it comes to our customer base. Here is some of our uh, global customers. Um, as you can see, this is mainly American customers and, and European customers from the automotive industry. Uh, we have also companies that do space or medical engineering, or even your uh, tool companies like Stiel or Hilti. Uh, so it's pretty split out, but all of them uh, build fancy high-tech systems uh, that have software and hardware combined. And this exactly leads us to the industry challenge. And uh, this picture might be an automotive picture, uh, but the challenge is the same. It's the systems get ever more complex and the timelines that you have to develop those systems uh, get shortened over time all the time. Uh, all the time because you need to be competitive. You have more and more software components in your systems, electrical components, hydraulic, hydraulic components, and of course, man, medical, uh, mechanical, mechanical components. Somehow my uh, talking is not as good as used to, as it is normally today. And there is lots of things that can interfere in these systems. And in order to build safe systems, we need to understand all of this, of this interference dependencies. And uh, that's why we need some kind of agile methods today, also for systems engineering, to be able to deliver the product in a reasonable time. And even to be able to start to develop a product when not all requirements, not everything is completely set in stone when we start, as you can see in this example, uh, our initial plan was to arrive somewhere within this gray circle at the bottom. Uh, but as we learned during the development cycles, the iterations in this agile R&D project, we ended up a little bit in a different spot than we initially thought. And you can also see that in every iteration, the scope or where we are headed became smaller and smaller. And in the last iterations, it was already pretty clear that we would end up somewhere around the red dot. And this is basically how this um, agile works. In agile, it's normal in agile systems engineering uh, that your requirements are not something static that you pass over, but it's the norm and not the exception that requirements are altered in every inter iteration. So you have a lot of change going on and you need a strong uh, support uh, and understanding uh, to manage all these changes on the various levels. Um, the solution strategies that are common for a model for the systems engineering side of, of the agility process of making the R&D process more agile is very clearly uh, 
around model-based systems engineering. So to use languages like SysML uh, to express uh, the, the architecture and the behavior of the system to be built. And obviously you, we need strong configuration and change management support. As we learned already uh, in the previous slide, change is a given. It's not an accident, it's not a change request. We have to learn uh, to manage constant change. And the overall um, tagline for this is very often agile development because it's a, a more, more agile, more integrated process to get things done. Uh, most systems that are built have safety critical impacts and as such we need to have additional uh, things in place that maybe are not common uh, for a typical agile line of business projects we need safety analysis and assessments we need traceability between requirements and architecture and source code and test cases uh, we need a solid change management which is also a requirement that is um, uh, given by these safety norms like the ISO 2622 for automotive or the IEC 61508 and we need verification based on the requirements uh, situation and what's also very typical for HL processes that verification starts in sprint one and not at the end of the project so also the constant verification of the products is something we see very typically in agile systems engineering processes and now we come to our core, um, our core know-how, our, our core thing is, is the modeling, yeah. And very often, um, the one of the very important parts of the modeling in this systems engineering context, agile systems engineering context, is that we maintain the traceability between the architecture and in on the right column it's the systems engineering it's the blocks on the left side it's the software engineering architecture and the requirements are in the middle uh, a bit like the center or where all the modeling starts because if you look at it even a requirements management tool like polarion or codebeamer is in reality a modeling tool you have elements you create connections you create dependencies between the elements so for us the modeling in reality starts in the requirements management solution and then we take it to a modeling tool like in our case enterprise architect to create the traceability uh, downstream with the systems engineering architecture and the software engineering architecture but uh, please allow me i hope many of you are aware of this but very often i, I i'm really i learned to remind very often on this fact the model is not the diagrams this is really important for for all of your understanding the model shall be machine readable machines are not very good in reading diagrams and the diagrams are views on the model that are built to make it easier to understand the model for humans but the model the truth is in the green box uh, you should be able to delete all diagrams in your models and not lose any information if you are not probably you are drawing and not modeling so this is really an important fact on whatever tool you use it's always the same if you're using powerpoint you are drawing for sure but if you use a modeling tool uh, always be aware that the diagrams are just views on the model in enterprise architect it's there's a very simple uh, uh, option uh, to make this transparent if you want to explain to a colleague for example in this case I clicked on the traffic light colors and I opened up the traceability view and I could see all the connections the traffic light colors has with the pedestrian traffic light this has a connection with the main class with the pedestrian traffic lights and so on so you can see it's in reality a big graph and not the diagrams uh, that makes up the model to manage these models in an agile way one of the best practices we have seen 
uh, in, in, in customer supplying these ideas is to follow uh, processes that are maybe Git flow is the most prominent one, uh, where you do feature branches for each new capability you build into the system. A feature branch would be these light gray dots. The dark gray dots are what we call trunk. And whenever we have to develop a new capability, for example, in our example that I will show in the demo, we will develop a traffic light that has the new capability to blink green before it switches to orange. So when we start to develop this new capability in an iteration, we would start a feature branch. If this feature branch is not finished, during an iteration, we simply keep it open and we merge it back to the trunk whenever the feature is approved, is reviewed, and then only then we make it available uh, to be viewed by consumers of our model. Uh, in the demo, I will show uh, this with Prolaborate, which is a, a web-based uh, viewing application for enterprise architect models. And to be able to work with branches, we need to introduce a concept that is very common in software engineering nowadays. It's called optimistic version control, which means we can work independently, Philip and myself, we can work independently on the model and commit our changes whenever we want. If there is a, a conflicting change, uh, a merge operation is run. And this is one of the uh, key things lever lever brings to the plate that we have a tool that is capable uh, to merge changes and show diffs between various changes uh, with enterprise architect models and as you can imagine without uh, this optimistic version control where i do not have to go to the library get the book write the sentence into it and then return it to the library for the next guy to take the book and write the sentence into the book. If we can do this in parallel, this is a key capability we need to be able to work in an agile fashion with models. And today we will look at this process uh, that that, that we do uh, to enable it. What we have on our loc local computer is a Git repository uh, with an enterprise architect model. We have our lemon tree as the different merge tool on our local computer. For the sake of this demo, we use GitHub and GitHub Actions because it's a very convenient and popular way uh, to do version control and continuous integration, uh, continuous development slash DevOps uh, with the GitHub actions. But you can also use Jenkins or TeamCity or Bitbucket instead of GitHub or GitLab or IBM RTC or PTC Lifecycle Manager. It really doesn't matter. We are backend agnostic in this sense. But for the sake of the demo, today we will use GitHub. And at a certain trigger, our pipeline will publish the model uh, for the stakeholders to be able to view them in, web, in the web. <laughs> Additionally, uh, we bring in the requirements. As I said, requirements are something that is constantly changed in an agile MBSC process. So to have a strong capability to integrate requirements with your models to create the traceability is a key, uh, a key thing to have. And we will showcase this with our Polarion connector. We have a similar product for CodeBeamer, uh, but uh, today we choose to use Polarion because we haven't shown it as often as we have shown the CodeBeamer in the past. And the idea is basically that we bring down the requirements, including the relationships that were created in Polarion between the requirements into Enterprise Architect to use them for the traceability. And so the final layout of our of our demo uh, will start with Polarion and uh, will end in Prolaborate. And that's what we're gonna see live in a few, few minutes. So we were talking about pipelines and pipelines for one exist in this uh, GitHub action Jenkins team city world where we 
uh, do model validations, where we do checks if the models have conflicts, where we check if the Polarion requirements have been updated in the meanwhile, and all of these nice things. But also there is pipelines for the process that we run. And it typically starts with a task, then we create the branch for this task, the model is modified, we commit the changes, then we can use a concept called pull request or merge request, which is common in these Git platforms like GitHub or Bitbucket to review and validate. And there are also the automatic jobs, the pipelines are running that will tell us if the model uh, is um, good enough for our quality criteria. And once we are done, we can merge it back into the main line, into the trunk, and it can be published uh, to be able to communicate the current start, uh, status of our engineering project with stakeholders. And uh, as you can see for agility, you have many of these processes running for each task. You have this chain of creating a feature branch, changing, reviewing, they all run in parallel. And therefore you also need the pipelines in the GitHub or Jenkins to be able to keep everything under control. And now we're gonna start with the demo. I will close my PowerPoint. And uh, we will start in Polarian. And uh, we are Austrians. And in Austria, we have some very weird thing for foreigners. Our traffic lights blink green before they turn orange. Uh, a very unique feature. And we build a traffic light system in this example. And we now got this new requirement uh, that we have to implement the green blinking in our system. And to start this, um, I use a, a, a GitHub issue, but you could also use a Jira issue or something from Azure DevOps. It really doesn't matter. You can see the task was created. It's linked with my Polarian project. And if you remember the PowerPoint from before, the first step before I start modeling or working on it is I create a branch. In this case, I create a branch on the GitHub platform and not in the local Git client. So my branch exists now and I can go to Enterprise Architect, open up the model, and for systems engineers that are sometimes not super comfy uh, with the various Git clients, we have a, a simplification in here. Our add-in has a simplified Git client and I can now pull to get the latest changes from GitHub. You can see the model is closed automatically. The pull is done and uh, the model will be opened up again. And now we know that we have this new task to implement the green blinking. And so I can switch from main branch uh, to this uh, green blinking branch. It's the branch 213, implement green blinking for Austria. I switch the branch and I'm now working offline in a shelf copy uh, or in my local Git repo. And we check out the requirements and we can see, oh, this requirement with the green blinking is missing. So the first step before we do the implementation of the green blinking is uh, we uh, check with the CodeBeamer importer if the new requirement is available. Now Polarion is uh, contacted and the new requirements are brought into uh, enterprise architect, you can see the green blinking is available and we can go to this tracing diagram and we can introduce the green blinking requirement and uh, create the traceability, a realization between uh, the car traffic light block and the uh, car traffic light software two things we might need to touch to implement it. We can also write an additional uh, comment here. Mm, we need to change the behavior. 
And we can also write the comment here. Please detail why we need this going forward. And so we do changes to the model. We can uh, work on the diagram layout, for example. It might make sense to move this up. If you listen correctly, I'm only doing the layout thing to make it easier to read for humans. It doesn't matter for the machines. And uh, we could also do changes to our state machines now. And uh, let's check. And you can see it's not yet here, uh, but I will uh, save this for, for another demonstration because it's not really part of this, of this use case. Once I'm done, I can go uh, again to our simplified Git client and choose commit and push. And the commit and push uh, creates basically a unique change set and pushes uh, the changes we did to the model back to the GitHub platform. So what happens now is the local commit is created and the model is pushed onto GitHub. And in a second or so, uh, yeah, now uh, we can create a pull request in GitHub. And the pull request is like um, a document that asks others to review and approve our changes. So it's like, like a documentation of change. And what you can see here is that uh, checks are already started running that will uh, consolidate uh, once it's done. For example, uh, we check uh, some technical details on the model. This is this lemon tree model readiness or model validation. We do some consistency checking. We check if the Polarion requirements are still up to, up to date. Uh, we check if there is changes that happened. For example, here I have a link that I can use uh, to check if the Polarion requirements are the same. Then they are in the in uh, in the model, and Polarion are in sync. Uh, if I click this link, Lemon Tree will open up, and our uh, different merge tool will show you us. Okay, there is no changes. And this is really handy going forward. And now, because we were already talking about changes and constant change, I will go back to this Polarion requirement and change it uh, to six. Currently, it says uh, blink four times, but I think that's not correct. So let's change it to blink six times. So this is exactly what I said. This constant change is happening. And uh, we will see uh, there is uh, some changes, but obviously I cannot merge this branch back because there's conflicts. And the next thing I want to show you is how to resolve such a conflict. The conflict happened because my colleague Stefan, uh, after I created the branch, committed his changes to the model. So we will go to uh, my preferred Git client, uh, which is uh, Smart Git. And one second, I have to close the model first. And uh, we are in SmartKit. And as you can see, this is not recorded. And I'm not uh, VJing a YouTube video, but I'm doing this all live. And now we pull the changes. And we can see, OK, Stefan changed the model. So this is why we have a conflict. In this uh, Git flow logic, I have to do something that is called a rebase, which means I will integrate Stefan's changes into my branch. And only after I have done that successfully, I can merge it back. So I will click on this integrate. And the integrate now starts this rebase solution. And this is the first time you will experience Lemon Tree Live. I can now double click on my EA model lemon tree will open up automatically in merge mode and i can make a decision which of the changes i want to continue uh, to use uh -huh, very interesting there was a 
problem. Okay. We will continue like this. And once it's done, this merge, if there, if we didn't change the same elements, the merge is done automatically. And if the merge is done, we can push it uh, to the to the GitHub again. And typically now uh, I will be able to change to to uh, do the pull request um, in a proper way. And you can see it's again running. Not yet. The checks are running again. And now because we resolve the conflict between the model and uh, uh, we can now squash and merge, which means bring back our branch. We are done finishing the job. Um, we, what I didn't show you before is that we have these review session files that basically show us what we have changed in the model in this branch. So when I do a review on the model, I can open up uh, these files and you can see on light casing, obviously Stefan changed something and I changed something. Uh, it was uh, in the in the text, in the documentation, he did a different change and in, during the uh, graphical merge, I can make a decision why which one I want to continue, or I can even combine them. And also on the tracing diagram, you can see uh, we did change, both of us did some changes on the diagram, and we can make a decision which one we want to move forward. Uh, once these uh, things are, are done, and you can see there's a lot of red lights, so uh, we are having fun with this demo right now, uh, because I guess there is a problem <laughs> that happened. Uh, we can then squash and merge the branch, which I will not do right now uh, because it takes too long. And after this squash and merge, again, the pipeline tools, the GitHub actions uh, will publish the model. And this is this uh, uh, pub. Uh, a publish components action. This action will run and it will publish the model onto uh, the web-based um, tool. In our case, the web-based tool is Prolaborate. And this Prolaborate gives our stakeholders, our users, the ability uh, to view the model, consume the model, and also have a discussion on the model elements. Uh, this, this is hosted on a central repository, but the engineers work in the Git uh, with the Git-based uh, tools. And so I, it's my pleasure to sum it up. Uh, basically, what we do is we use established workflows from software engineering for modeling. The pipelines, this, this work style with the automation and so on, helps to manage the agility, to know early on where we will have conflicts, uh, to validate the model and so on. And we can use agile team collaboration with branching, even if we do MBC or modeling, which is not possible with other solutions uh, that are available. And all of these processes with the feature branches give you very good triggers to do peer reviews, to check changes to the models, uh, to, to, to manage the change altogether. And this allows you to publish and release consistent models to your stakeholders. And our solutions are basically uh, backend agnostic. Um, the demo that I showed you today is based on GitHub and the pull request idea uh, to, to have these documents that help you review change. And it was planned for half an hour, and I think we did pretty good on time. And uh, Conrad is moderating the questions. Thank you, Daniel, for the presentation. I have already answered some questions. We will send out all questions and answers after the webinar, but maybe there are two open questions. Can a model check uh, be configured maybe during the commit? Is there an API for user-specific checks? Uh, yeah, you can create specific checks. Uh, there is uh, two options. You can go the home 
grown solution that is rather common in the EA world where you use SQL statements or if you want to have an enterprise level uh, solution for model checks we have an integration with Inquiry uh, Labs server product which is a query language Viatra based model validation framework. I think there's a question from Roman uh, which is rather simple. Yes, it can work with GitLab or Bitbucket. And yes, we have customers that use it with RTC. So GitHub is just simple for demos, uh, but it's um, but we are backend agnostic. You need a, a runner for the pipelines. Mm -hmm. In our case, this was GitHub Actions, but we also have customers using Azure pipelines or uh, TeamCity or Jenkins and so on. Uh, the last question is uh, e for EA integrations. Uh, um, it's a pretty generic uh, question uh, that I want to uh, answer um, better in person, Benjamin. So we will take this offline. Uh, Jürgen asked a very good question. Solving conflicts single file based is pretty good in Git. How do you manage solving conflicts which involve more than single model file? We do not because we understand this complexity very well. So our strategy is not to check in XMI files on package level, which is a more common solution, but we always check in a single model file. We, if you need to modularize, we have a different strategy that is again close to software engineering practices. We have capabilities to publish parts of the model like a Maven or NuGet package that can be reused in other models. So in these scenarios, you have a platform model uh, that publishes model components on Nexus or Artifactory, and you can use them in your project. Uh, there is a question about price for a POC. I think we will take this offline. And yes, we will uh, post a link to the to the require uh, to the video. Yes, I uh, think. Yes, that's basically so. what we can do right now. All open questions we will take offline and answer later. And as always, feel free to reach out to us. I'm also always willing to do one-to-one -one sessions. We are uh, super open in that respect. Okay, then have a nice afternoon. And uh, I hope uh, to see you soon. Our next webinar in February will be focused purely on the Polarian integration and all the tricks we have uh, in our sleeves on this aspect of the, of the MBSC process. Thank you.